Welcome members and friends of Highland Congregational Church once again as we celebrate this the Lord's Day and as we do this ancient ritual each week I extend to you the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it be upon you and in turn pass it on to another how important and vital that is in that process that it does not begin nor end with us. It goes beyond. Now again, I remind you that music is available on YouTube through Pastor Louis Leone, various contributions of our music staff. And now let us be called into our worship as we are called into being the church. I'd like to read to you from the prophet Isaiah in the 42nd chapter. This is what prophet Isaiah understood from God. He wrote, this is what God the Lord says, He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to his people and life to those who walk on it, I, the Lord, have called you into righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. May this be a blessed day for us as we begin in this, his word. Thanks be to God. We've heard of defining moments, both for persons as well as nations, communities, but oftentimes we think of them as more as the moment or the event itself rather than the way that individuals experience it. And today I want to remind us it's more about who we are and what we do in defining moments. The, what we've experienced in these past months again is really comes down to who we are and how we might define ourselves. Now for Ralph Waldo Emerson back in 1870, he said, the true test of civilization is not the census, nor the size of the cities, nor the crops, but the kind of person the country turns out. The way we see others may say a lot about us, who we really are. And the Apostle Paul understood that as he was addressing the people of this cosmopolitan community of Corinth. And this is what he wrote to them, understanding what he himself had received and what they had received and how they would begin to translate that in their lives. In the fifth chapter of Paul's second letter to the people of Corinth, he wrote, So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do not any longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, therefore he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men and women's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though and through, as though God was making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And may this blessed word speak to our hearts and our minds and spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Now we are called into being, not just the way that we were born, but the Apostle Paul understood very importantly that we become a new creation when we are in Christ and the old has gone away. And that means as we are transformed, it begins now in a new way to define us and what we do as well as who we are. Now, this story I love from years ago of a baseball Hall of Famer, Harmon Killebrew, some of you may recognize his name. Uh, he remembered his father in a very special way. One day when they were out playing on the front lawn, roughhousing, 
a neighbor came along and said to his father, Mr. Killebrew, if you keep playing ball like that on your front lawn, you won't have much of a lawn left. Harmon said, my father replied to this neighbor, sir, I'm not raising grass, I'm raising sons. Again, he defined himself, understanding who he was. And I think that that's what the Apostle Paul would like for all of us to understand of who are we? How, in the midst of any specific defining moment, do we come out of this? How do we see ourselves and express ourselves? And I think what is important is when he says, a new creation we become, and the old is gone. Now, I don't think I have to explain to all of us how vital understanding of the old is, because how at times it's trapped us, perplexed us, seemingly invading our spirit. The old, Paul was saying, no longer are we being seen by the past, but, or, but rather now who we become. That's what's important. And we have been reconciled with God. Reconciled with God. It's something that Paul says is what God intends for all persons to understand. And that in turn, when we reconcile with God ourselves as feeling that God's grace and love has been extended to us, then we in turn offer that to others. Now, others, how do we see them? Um, I think Paul is saying, when we see someone else, we need to make them good in our eyes as they are in God's eyes. That's oftentimes we forget that, that we see them maybe through our own bias, our own filters of life. But the Apostle Paul was saying to these people of Corinth, see people as God sees them, a new creation, that they too can be reconciled with this gracious God in Christ. Now, if we think that God looks down on others, then we ourselves will look down on others. And does that sound familiar? Through the ages, through even our recent history, how people see other people sometimes, unfortunately, is somewhat put together by how they think that God sees them. And so they don't think any higher of another person than they would of themselves. But if they see themselves as lifted up in God's eyes, then how easy it is for them to lift others up as well. How God sees us is how we then begin to see others. Now, that is what I would call the lenses of love, of being able to look through and seeing people in and through the light of God's love, His grace and His peace. Now, some of you may recall back in the 60s, it was actually 1969, that Dr. Thomas Harris, he wrote a book entitled, I'm Okay and You're Okay. Now, I became very familiar with that book, and I was fascinated at how much trouble people had with that title. They were always turning around saying, well, people aren't okay. How can they be okay? Well, Dr. Harris was really understanding something, that if we understand ourselves by the grace of God, of understanding that we're really okay with God, then we see others in that same way. I'm okay you're okay. Not as always about what we do. We all fall short. We all have our transgressions, things that we wish we hadn't done. But the self, who we are, and that's what the Apostle Paul was getting at. For us to realize an importance of knowing that in Christ we are a new creation and the old is gone. And then we begin to see life, our lives, other people's lives, in and through that lens. It's important for us to be called into that kind of ministry because the world needs it ever so much more now. Every day we see evidence of people who rather look down on one another rather than seeing them through God's eyes, God's lens, and how they are a person to be loved. The Apostle Paul, in essence, was saying, if you feel the love, you'll give the love. And that's what these people of Corinth needed so long ago, and we today need to hear it ever so more today. Now, Scott Peck, a great psychiatrist who I've often quoted once wrote, he said, love cannot happen unless I commit myself to making it happen. Thinking about that for a moment, 
that it's not just something we feel, it's something we intentionally do, as you've heard me say that before. It's a ten intentional. We make things happen, we make love happen. We then are able to make God's appeal to others. As Paul said, we are ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of love, and uh, not just our love, but God's love. And that's where the real power lies. We belong to Christ. We live in Christ. We live through Christ. We love in Christ. And this then defines us. This is who we become. Now, as I said uh, before, that we're again venturing out more and more, encountering people. Maybe we've forgotten about the various people that we encounter and how they might be seen by others. We have the privilege of reaching and extending ourselves to another and saying, God loves you and sees you in a way that now I can see you, in a way that extends the grace that God has intended. Now, a great theologian by the name of Paul Tillich once wrote, he said, Find out about a person's love of God by observing their ultimate concern in life. The Apostle Paul, in essence, was saying that. What is our ultimate concern in life if it's not to extend as well as express the love of God in Christ Jesus? Not just for ourselves, but to others as well as well. Our life, how we live it, how we react or respond, defines us. And we're reminded that the word believe, what we say we believe, literally means to live. We have to live that which we have been called to in Christ Jesus. And with that, I invite you now to join with me as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty, gracious, merciful God, we thank you for love every day that comes to us without any of it being earned, coming, extended, expressed in Christ Jesus, that we are your beloved, and that now in turn that we can turn that love outward to others, and to be conscious that that is our calling, the defining of the church, of what we're called to do, who we're called to be. I pray, Lord, that we will follow closely to our Lord Jesus Christ, and in these words of the Apostle Paul, that we will reach out and become ambassadors of our Lord Jesus, reconciling others because we have given a good news, expressing it not only by what we say, but most importantly, of how we treat others, how we are with others. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I offer to you these words May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace both now and in the life everlasting. Amen.